That's a, a network of uh, 32 partners in Europe who work together to upload uh, their audiovisual content uh, on our portal, euscreen.eu, where users can find stuff and, and, and uh, watch at it and in a few weeks can also play with it. With it. Uh, and we also, as a project, provide uh, the European Digital Library, Europeana, uh, with uh, metadata uh, that will then users of Europeana give access to audiovisual content that our partners in the uh, National Archives provide. And that's about one million metadata sets. So by the end of February 2016, uh, users who log on to europeana.eu can access, uh, well, I guess then 1.5 million audiovisual um, forms of content, pro television programs, uh, video clips uh, online. Reuse is, is a difficult term uh, and, and, and very uh, slippery. Um, there's few audiovisual material that can really be downloaded and freely used for whatever aim. But what we uh, on our website uh, will offer, well, from the day on or in the next few weeks, something we call a publication builder, where you can uh, tell stories about uh, clips you find on our website and then uh, publish them on the website. You can not uh, publish it outside EU screen, you can then have links to our website and that's uh, a copyright uh, condition. We can uh, have our content downloaded and played out on different platforms. The major differences are difference in, 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 in language and culture, but you can overcome this and we all speak some English or enough English to, to communicate. Uh, and we are all willing to understand each other. Uh, the the big, big differences are between uh, those countries uh, that are very far in digitizing their content. Ina is one of them, uh, Sound and Vision in, in the Netherlands is one of them, and those partners who only recently started to digitize material and who have uh, very few uh, of a, a very small percentage of their content uh, available digital. Some of uh, our partners n uh, don't even have their own website where they can post stuff. So the difference are more difference in when did uh, an archive or a collection start digitizing their material, are the funds for digitizing that material uh, and uh, how far are they in developing the infrastructure. What we observe is that, that more and more collections are online, uh, available online. There's the big uh, providers of uh, audiovisual content like uh, YouTube, Google's YouTube, uh, and other big re repositories where you can find a lot of stuff, but not well curated. Uh, when you see a uh, find a television program on, on YouTube, it might be on low resolution, bad quality, and you never know uh, when it was uh, shot, when it, when it was broadcast to other makers. So what we do in the first place, place in, at the Euroscreen is provide rich metadata so uh, that you can contextualize uh, an item, a program, or a clip, and know where is it from, when was it made, uh, what does it mean there's a short description in, in English for all items. Um, and the next step will be uh, to create uh, publications that then tell stories about uh, these um, clips or programs or series. And I guess that is the most interesting next step uh, to have the content uh, created in terms of uh, telling stories about uh, the history, origin uh, and significance. Since a while we, we publish uh, still blogs with uh, thematic collections like uh, sports or uh, something about jazz. And since I'm a jazz fan, I really very much liked uh, the footage on, on jazz, which is artists talking before or after concerts uh, or t their television um, performances. So that's something that impressed me a lot.